B, number one. We are from Konsman. From Nats Recycling Center. We are from Ogafet Company Limited. Darkling Design. We, we are, are Sege. We are Media Foods. Ecotech Solutions. We are Immobilance. And we are from Agri Makeup. St. Utikubad. Professor Le Ventures. Kudu Technology. We are Wentia Group Processing Center. Lali Lamot. Comfort Farms and Trading Company Limited. Biobalance. HS Code. The stage is set. The lights are bright. And the cameras are rolling. Right now, we'd like to see our judges. Also, in this episode, our contestants will be trimmed down to 10. Too bad. And good luck to all of them. Can we have, um, can we have Darklands, MFED, and Nature's Coast, um, raise your hands, please. Okay, so you guys were solving real problems. We enjoyed your pictures. But unfortunately, you guys are all going home today. Thank you very much. Conzi man and that's recycling. Put your hands up. Congratulations, you're going through into the top ten. The rest of you, unfortunately, you're also going through to the top ten. Congratulations. <laughs> Emo Balance and Murdio to put their hands up. Murdio? Yeah. Emo Balance? Emo yeah. Immobilance? Okay. Yeah. Congratulations, you are going through to the top ten. Well done. Oka Fed and Wenchi Agro Processing. Unfortunately, you're going home today. Thank you so much. Buffalo Shell Adventures. I'm sorry, but you're going home. In our last episode, the six remaining contestants took a task from Simon Tena. The task? Get into an elevator and convince our guest judge with your business plan in only 45 seconds. After that, our contestants had a B2B session further convincing our judges and our panelists of the viability of their business plans in the area of secularity. In this episode, our six remaining contestants will be trained down to three. This three will get to compete for the ultimate prize of 100,000 Ghana cities. Good luck to all of them. But before all of that, Another task from our judge, Ama Jampo. Thank you. At the back, the back row, we have Biobalance, Agri Mercab, and Kodu. Congratulations, you're our top three. The front three, well done on getting this far, but it's the end of the road. Thank you. All the best. All the best. Okay, guys, so we're oh, okay. really proud of you. Okay. It saves me a ton of money. Amazing. We have a lot of fast too, so we can supply with quality organic fertilizer. Wow. Boost okay. The weight of your, your crops. My crops, yeah, eh? Yeah, Good. Yeah. That could be very much and appreciated. Your, your soil is. My soil is lacking yeah, exactly. nutrients because I've been using it over and over and over again. What we'll be doing for you, up. yes. Okay. So we'll be setting up um, a small unit to be able to produce lardy for yourself, and this is how much it's going to cost you. Okay. So if you're able to make some commitment as soon as possible, we can get to work. You know, some of the prices keep going up and up and up. So the faster, the better for us. Oh, okay. It's actually quite affordable, and it's within the budget that I had. Okay. So. Okay. Yes, I'll be able to make something like The challenge given was very daring, but we were hoping to achieve it at the end of the day. Actually, if we could do technology, now, code technology, yeah, yeah, pad, sanitary pad, 
Me bo pad fu so die by abeja so a ye fe na iris pad. It be be a pad we be a ye natural. E na ye so ye wo adoption time of 7 hours. Na e se ye de no e chese other brands na e wo dwa so no. But o ye be ye nsio na e be demonstrate absorbance na ma. The lowest is how much is one? A soil and she bone, Kuni, a mini, 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 a all in the quest to win the grand prize of a 100,000 Ghana cities is my honor to welcome you to the grand finale. This is the Secular Economic Competition, a program in line with the European Union support to Ghana's net zero ambition, SDG Go 12 in responsible consumption, production, and social equity. My name is Bliss King. Welcome to the grand finale. As you may know, finals come with a lot of, you know, tension. So, our judges have brought a lot of color to the stage today. Good to see you all once again. Boss J, Amma G, and ST, my good friend. How's everyone feeling? Fantastic. Sorry. It's the last round of pitches. We've heard a lot in the last seven weeks and everything boils down to this moment. Let me go to you, Esty. Your expectations after all they have been through, the training, the tasks, and the advice they've gotten from all of you. What are you expecting on this last one? That each of them makes the most of their opportunity. They're all here on their merits for different reasons, but can they bring it home? Make the best of your opportunities. Yeah. Amma G. Flawless pitching. Oh. Um, business modeling on point and just really refining what they're doing to scale up. The boss J. Last week I said it's a battle of three heads. Does uniqueness win today? Or courage wins it? Or empathy? I guess we'll see. It would definitely be interesting. Well, to bring in the fourth mind, we have a fourth judge for you. Let's meet our fourth judge. The European Union in Ghana has been instrumental in the area of secularity and making sure we have a safer, cleaner environment. Joining me is the ambassador of the European Union in Ghana, Mr. Ichad Razali. Hello, sir. How are you? Always good to see you. Why is it so important for the European Union mission here in Ghana to bring up a project like the Secular Economy Competition? The resources are not infinite and the pressure we worldwide, not in Europe only, not in Africa only, not in the rest of the world only, is higher and higher. You know, demography, consumption, so on and so forth. And circularity means that we are reusing the same materials over and over again instead of extracting, using and dumping, which is more or less what we are currently doing. The circularity is a way to make this way of life more sustainable, to alleviate the pressure on Mother Nature and more importantly to ensure a better future for the upcoming generations for your kids my kids everyone absolutely yes uh, let me congratulate you on other projects like the the circular economy conference and, and this one the, the competition where we have seen incredible ideas and since season one and i know you've seen a, a couple of ideas here too what, what's your general impression of the season of, of the circular economy. Now well, this is uh, incredible. I've um, opened the circular economy seminar, mm -hmm. and we had the opportunity to uh, showcase some uh, some of the contestants, and they are brilliant ideas as always. And I'm excited to see uh, who are the ones who are making it for the final stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to be convinced. I want to be amazed. I want to be surprised. Well, you get a, a chance to be on our judging panel as we go into the final round of pitches for the business that would match the winner of the competition. What are some of the pointers you'll be looking out for 
when our top three present their ideas? I'm not a specialist <laughs> and I'm grateful for being invited to be part of the panel, but ideas that are replicable, ideas which are making a true contribution for the circularity concept, but as well for the community. Because we are not working for ourselves, we are working to improve the lives of the community. Uh, and ideas which are making a difference as well in terms of price. Because what would be the point if you are proposing a product which is way more or way too expensive to be used? So these are the elements, personally, I would be interested in um, seeing in those ideas. Well, uh, all the best uh, as you sit on the panel. And uh, we also hope that the circular economy competition will continue into the future and to unearth more incredible ideas for the future. And uh, for me, someone who has been involved in this project for two seasons, I want to say a big congratulations to, to the European Union and a big thank you for bringing up this project because it's, it's, it's really, really fine what circularity means in, in our economy and for the EU, the amazing things you're doing in Ghana. What's your last word to the people who are watching you and are really proud of how, how many moves you've made to ensure circularity in Ghana? Circularity is one of the key elements that we are working on with the government of Ghana. Basically, pretty much everything that we are doing is attached to support job creation, economic growth in a more sustainable way. So circularity is part of that. We want to support digitalization, we want to support new agriculture practices. Uh, part of them circularity can uh, feature and this is uh, part of a larger undertaking. Good luck each other as you join the rest of the panel to determine who is the grand winner of the 100 thousand Ghana cities. We will not disappoint you. Absolutely, I believe that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our wonderful guest judge today, Ershad Razali. Biobalance, agri makeup, and coding technology have made it to the top three of the competition. Before they take a final shot at winning the grand prize of 100,000 Ghana cities, let's hear from our finalists. Kudu Technology is one of the companies that have really impressed our judges and have made it this far. Hello guys. Hello. Tell me about your company, Kudu Technology. Okay, okay so Kudu Technology is an agri startup in the north and we are into making affordable sanitary parts to help solve period poverty among young women. Interesting word, period poverty. Yes. But Fabi, you chronicle your journey for me so far from the first day of pitching to making it all the way to the top three? Well, um, I was actually very happy because um, we were told that there were a lot of applicants so to be amongst the, the top 17 at that time was actually a very great fit for us. So, well, the first day was quite tough and I'm happy. I'm happy that to be amongst the top three, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but we just kept pushing in. And so how really, really tough was this competition for you so far? So from the beginning, we had um, the our main challenge was, you know, I always my team, my, my co-founder and I, we had a strategy. We take every stage at a time. We take it stage by stage. It's so in the first stage, we had uh, someone doing similar projects as as so it was going to be tough because we felt like, oh well, somebody too has the same idea and is the best of the best. I'm also in the first stage, um, we're able to pull through. We're able to to pull through to the next stage and the second the, the following stage it was it was it was quite tough because after we got the feedback from the first stage mm. everybody we went and worked out where they probably came short and we we came back again to battle it out again and all in all so our main aim is not we, though we want to win but it's not really all about we always want it's the more we keep like the more we stay in the competition, the more we have the opportunity to tell people about what good technology is all about. And also improve your business. Improve our business. That. Latifa, what, what is that one thing that your company has learned from being a part of this competition? Okay, so far from the judges and how they've been taking us through the mentoring sessions, it is actually an eye-opener. We've learned a lot of stuff 
and we've inculcated these ideas into our company and we are hoping to better our strategy moving forward that's interesting you guys have a very unique and interesting story as well with two medical doctors from the north yes. and you were classmates well, med, med lab level. med labs med lab doctors and yes. and you both from the north yes. you were classmates yes, class and now you're competing for 100,000 <laughs> Ghana cities yes, yes. very interesting yes. how 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 many years have you been friends and when did you pick up this this business together okay. so we we've been friends for we well, have known her ever since my level 100 and so level 600 or like six years mm -hmm. so we had we have our other uh, co-founders so initially the idea didn't start with her it started with my other co-founders who we came together so one of our co-founders uh, you know the whole idea was just to figure out how we would uh, make good use of the banana and plantain so my co-founder came up with the idea that since the banana and plantain can observe uh, can can absorb a uh, fluid then it's better we try to make some cheaper out of it so with latifa being a classmate with latifa and i know her strength when it comes to research and all we we, we spoke to her we shared the whole idea with her and she came and she joined the business yes she joined the business so from me till now we've been last year me till now we've been and working this together, together. Yes. you both have the i believe the longest uh, trip back home amongst our top three <laughs> yes. and so i believe you would be hoping to win the prize money. How optimistic are you about winning this final prize? Okay, actually we are very confident of winning the final prize, but um, also from this competition it's not really about winning, it's about um, inculcating the ideas we've had so far in progress in our business. So even if we do not win, um, we would like to appeal to the public to support us when our product is finally released. That's interesting. You're looking beyond the competition. Yes. If you had a quick message to tell to young startups and people who have not been a part of this competition, looking at the experience you've gained over the last few weeks, what would that message be? So I always I learned something from Simon Turner, that's one of the judges that as a founder you need to always remain focused. So when you believe in what you are doing, just keep pushing. At the end of the day things to work out for you. That's what I've actually that's the, the message I have for fellow startups. Fawid and Latifa from Kobe Technology. I've got to wish you all the best. I believe a lot of people are rooting for you ahead of your final pitch to win the grand prize. So uh, fingers crossed and uh, good luck to both of you. Thank, Thank you. We'll see you again soon. Thank, Thank you. you very My name is Dr. Idi Mohamed Farid, co-founder of Kodi Technology. Initially, I shouldn't have been the one doing this introduction. Mubaraka should have been doing this introduction, but unfortunately, she's not here. Why? Because she's having her menses. Can I blame her for that? No, because menstruation is a natural phenomenon. That's just what happens when a lot of people, they miss bigger opportunities due to their inability to purchase menstrual materials. That's why my company, Kodi Technology, is here to make affordable and eco-friendly sanitary pad to solve the issue of period poverty among young women. Banana, in the, banana and plantain to make sanitary pad? Well, I'll leave it to Dr. Latifa to explain to you why it's medically safe for you to use banana and plantain to make sanitary pad. So Dr. Latifa, over to you. Okay. One key aspect in the analyzing of medical devices such as sanitary pads is the pH and the velcro ability pH is defined as how a substance is being acidic or basic. On the pH meter, 1 to 6 is considered acidic, 7 as neutral, 8 to 14 as basic. Upon the completion of the analysis by the Ghana, Ghana Standard Authority, Iris powered by Kobe Technology had a pH of 7, which is the same as that of distilled water. This makes Iris powered a better option for health standards among young women 
because it doesn't cause any irritation to the skin. And with the Velcro ability, it allows the part to stay in one place, allowing the young women to move about without feeling uncomfortable. Thank you very much. Now, let's come to the marketing. The global sanitary part business was estimated to be over 20 billion US dollars here at Kodu Technology. We highlight West Africa as our serviceable addressable market and Ghana as our serviceable obtainable market. The serviceable addressable market has a market figure of over 800 million US dollars and our obtainable market, just as I mentioned, Ghana has a market value of over 170 million US dollars. We'll be using a direct sales revenue model as our primary revenue model and as well as adopt the subscription model as our secondary model with the young women as our main customers using an indirect delivery channel that is linking up with them through retailers and distributors now to make sure that we exhaust all our raw materials just as the, just as the whole idea of circular economy we give we don't trash our raw, our byproducts after production we give it out to under, other industries to use people make clothes out of it some people sew bags out of it. And there's a company in, in Tamale, in the northern region, a good chef, who makes, they make coolers. They turn the byproducts into craft boxes for our coolers. We have a very, so far we've learned a lot from this whole program, particularly from Mr. Simon. We learned that as founders, we need to remain focused. From his training and the elevator pitch session, I can confidently now pitch to an investor within 45 seconds. So over to you, Dr. Latifa, what did you learn from Ms. Amar? Okay, from the market challenge issued by Mrs. Ama, we were able to learn a lot of lessons from business owners. Some of the lessons we took from business owners regarding what triggered their interest in the IRS part were that the fact that the company was based in Ghana, the natural components used to produce the part from the banana and then the plantain fiber, the pricing of the part which was more affordable as compared to other brands, the packaging of the pad, which will att attract more female customers due to the color, and also the impact it will have on a rural girl after purchasing it in solving period poverty. Also, we realized that we could make collaborations with NGOs to make sanitary parts for them. We met with the founder of Zongo for Girl Child Education, who requested 1,000 boxes for the annual International Menstrual Hygiene Day celebrations. In addition to that, we also had a pre-commitment of 561 boxes from other business owners. With a, in, in total, we had a pre-commitment pre of 1,561 boxes with a projected revenue of 374,640 Ghana cities. Hmm. How do we then meet this huge demand? That's why we are asking for a hundred thousand Ghana cities to purchase a decorticator and also a sanitary pad shaper in order to reduce the pricing of the pad when production begins. Thank you very much. Now to Boss J. One trait I learned from Boss J is that as founders, you need to study your strengths and weaknesses. Boss J told me that. Uh, my co-founder, Dr. Latifa, will be a better fit for the elevator pitch. And indeed, she emerged as the winner of the elevator pitch. Yeah. To conclude it all, we are not only investing in our business, in code technology, but we are also helping in empowering the girl child, creating more opportunities for female farmers, and increasing the GDP of the country when we start exporting our products. Remember that once you purchase a sanitary pad, you are also contributing towards reducing period poverty among rural girls. Because after every 10 sales, we donate a pad to a rural girl. My name is Dr. Idi Mohamed Farid, co-founder of Kodu Technology. And I have here with my co-founder, Dr. Mohamed Latifa. Thank you very much. Let's get to hear from another top three contestant, Agrimec, on their project ahead of the final pitch. Hello, guys. Hi. It's good to see you. You both have a you look like a very unlikely pair, a very vocal one, and a, and, a, and a more quiet one I have observed through the competition. Tell me about your business. All right, so Agrimec Cab is an animal feed company where we are trying to create an enabling framework 
that will help farmers convert their waste into feed, fertilizer, and cash. All across the country, waste is generated, organic waste is generated, yet many farms are collapsing because they are unable to afford feed. Yes, the last time on our market, um, on our market tour, we met a farmer who is currently buying a bag of feed for 750 cities, which was previously around 100 cities. That's crazy. That and breaks many, your heart. Yeah, it really tears my heart apart. And that's the reason why we exist. Why should there be organic waste all around when farmers should be struggling this way? Mm. We are here to bring an end to that cycle. You have a very noble idea. And uh, I mean, owing to that, you have also made it this far into the competition. What have you learned from uh, the beginning mm. up until now, where you're going into your final pitch to win the grand prize? Well, I'll say that I'm the one who's learned the most over the period in terms of um, how to communicate. I'm a verbose person in writing, and so when I speak, I try to speak too long, but I've learned over the period that you need to be concise, be concise. of what you're saying. Mm. Don't lose the audience by trying to bring in too much vocabulary or audience. Mm. And I've also learned that in trying to speak, sometimes it's good to sh let your emotion shine through. Okay. But sometimes people won't get how serious the problem is until they see you shed a tear. That was, wow, that's, uh, that's a really profound way to put together what you have. Let me just ask you now, also, what have you learned personally, not as a company, but you personally? So, yeah, just like you said, we learned, one of the key things we learned is that in order to reach the target market, we need to keep our market, uh, our, 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 our communication simple to them. That's one of the really, really key things we learned. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first things that we learned from our first pitch. Okay. And we carried that strategy to and so yeah, it was very very important for myself mm -hmm. and for him that's, it. that's very important now you guys are going to talk to me with a chance to win the final prize as you go into your pitch uh, how optimistic are you to emerge winners of season two of the secular economy competition well i believe we, we stand a, a solid chance we are of the opinion that whatever may come we tend to benefit because we have been able to get our message across mm -hmm. It's not about us at this point in time because if we continue with the rate at which things are running within the Ghanaian system of feed, animal husbandry and animal feed, mm -hmm. if it continues for long, it might be bad. So with us being able to get the message across, I think it's a win for us all. Okay. Okay. That's, 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 that's really interesting. Chances. I think that from the beginning of the competition till now, most of the ideas I saw were awesome awesome yeah people are doing so brilliant things i believe every single one of them deserve the chance and we are here also because we also have the chance and anyone could win but we know we also stand a greater chance and we had an awesome opportunity to also share our business with other people who bought into the ideas some of those who have already been evicted took some of our, our samples and are taking it there to already pave a market for us to come there so soon we'll be on a regional tour with our service. So service. You, you've already looked beyond this competition and the prize money. What's the future for for Agrimec, even if you do not win? Yeah. I, we believe that this has created an opportunity for us to send a, a tight message across. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very urgent message that, we, that is impending upon us. That if we do not do something now, the replications will be dangerous. And another key thing we were able to take away was that we practiced the elevator pitch before the main elevator pitch when we got into the building and we got someone a random person who was interested in the concept and has already invited us for uh, negotiations so i think it's opened up many opportunities and we want to send an even higher message out there that we need more people to support this worthy cause we shouldn't look our own our ways because the next generation is counting on all of us we must take matters into our own hands and change the future to be. And that's that's interesting. Your company presents a very, uh, a, a, a very a front of integrity and, and, and passion to the, the community and the Ghanaian society. I've got to wish you the best of luck as you go ahead to make your last pitch to win 100,000 Ghana cities. The chances now stand at about 33.3% mm -hmm. when you do the math. Yeah. But I, I, I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Yeah.
Hi, judges. Hi. As a young man in my mid-20s, the horrors of 1983, the famine, I was spared from that experience. Yet stories of families dying from cyanide poisoning as they strike to state their hunger with wild cassava, and people in long queues waiting for kinky made from maize meant for poultry, are stories that still send shivers down my spine and goosebumps all over my skin. Not to be an alarmist, that is exactly where we are heading with the current state of conditions in Ghana. Our animal husbandry industry and animal feed industries are tottering on the edge of collapse. And we are here exactly to try and ameliorate this challenge. From our market survey yesterday, from Legon to Kokobiti, it gave a clear picture of what we intend to do. When we started agri makeup, we sought out to just give value to some farmers. But after receiving many calls of frustrations and desperation from many farmers, from catfish farmers, pig farmers, tilapia farmers, that can we get some lavi for our feed? Then we knew that this is a cause for alarm. The statistics doesn't do justice to the kind of urgency that is at stake. Many farms are collapsing. Then we asked ourselves, why should farmers struggle to find feed when there's organic waste generated all across the country? What we are doing is not enough. And so we sought out to find an equitable solution to this problem. We decided to ensure that every farmer in Ghana gets the opportunity to produce their own feed from organic waste to be able to feed themselves and to feed Ghanaians as large. You may ask yourself, how does this affect me? I was at a restaurant, a food joint, I must say, over the weekend, and a man came to buy rice under a monase for four cities and couldn't afford meat. I imagined the many others that I know myself who can't afford protein. If we don't take care and end this and treat this, this challenge as an agent, as a, de as a demand, then we might have a future where a balanced diet is a mirage and only a word being taught in school. But nutrition has big impact on the economy, on the nutrition of individuals, and, on, and in the lives of every single one of us. And this is what we stand for as Agri Makeup. Our solution is to generate an enabling framework where farmers can convert their organic waste into feed, fertilizer, and cash. And we do this by offering training, infrastructural support, and the, lab, uh, the seed units that allow the farmer to use the Black Soldier Fly technology with as little hassle as possible. With the support of 100,000 Ghana cities, we aim to reach, increase our reach and our impact in a four-pronged approach. First off, we seek to hire two more staff to reduce our customer response time. Because of the customers being spread over all over the country, our capacity to reach them in a timely manner is contingent on our freedom to meet them. And with more people on board, we can meet this challenge. Our next um, area of imp imp impact is to invest into making the love nest and the trace for the activity itself easily available at an affordable price. The third one, which is of great interest, is to provide uh, the seed unit at a higher value whilst maintaining it at a cheap price. And finally, we seek to set up training facilities, five of them across the country, that would allow us to at least train 200 farmers by the end of this year to be able to do the Black Soldier Fly technology at an affordable rate and at an industrial rate as well. My feet are heavy. And it's no cause for alarm just because I stand here with the destinies of over 600,000 animal farmers in Ghana. And we are seeking not only 100,000 cities, but for the commitment of every single one that hears our voice to join this revolution where all organic waste across the country can be converted by the help of our farmers to feed, fertilizer, and cash. The destinies, the future of the next generation lies in our ability to make this decision today. And we want to create a culture of circular economy where every organic waste generated at all levels across the country is converted to feed, fertilizer, and cash. We are counting on your support 
and the support of everyone that hears our voice today. Let's get into a conversation with our third finalist, Biobalance. Michael and Emmanuel have been friends since St. Thomas Aquinas. That's very interesting. You guys have been friends since secondary school. Yeah. And now you're business partners. Exactly. What does Biobalance seek to achieve in the world? So we are hoping to cut down the cost of animal feed, especially poultry farmers. Mm -hmm. um, because of the high cost of feed, most farmers have resorted in preparing their own feed and missing out essential minerals for okay. their beds. So what Biobalance is doing is producing premium quality calcium supplement for these farmers to help the bears um, in terms of strength, blood clot, uh, blood clotting, mm -hmm. and the overall health of the bears. So this is about nutritious feed. Exactly. So tell me, Michael, what you have learned so far competing in the circular economy competition. Um, to me, I think that you need to be confident, you need to work on yourself a lot. Um, I made uh, good networking here, I met people that had much better ideas that I think that in the future we can also uh, partner with them and then make our company more uh, eco-friendly, like to part work together as a team. How much better do you think you've gotten as a group and a company in the last couple of weeks? I would say from the beginning, it was really tough. Um, it was me alone standing there. Uh, up to now, like looking back, I would say I've really made um, immense progress. <laughs> yeah, yes. immense progress. And um, in terms of teamwork, we, we become really strong. Yeah. Let's let's look beyond the competition, and uh, it's only one person that one company that can win. The, the grand prize of 100,000 cities. When you look beyond this competition and the, and the prize money, what do you see Biobalance? So I see Biobalance creating a lot of jobs, especially around the coastal areas. I see opportunity for farmers to make profit from their uh, business. I see poultry farm industry opening up and allowing the youth to also venture into it because feed cost is going to get lower. That's interesting. An interesting products you guys have as well. A lot of people have commended what you guys have throughout uh, your, your presentations. Yeah. But looking ahead to your last present presentation, or last pitch that you are going to to win the grand prize, what do you believe your chances are, Michael, to, to emerge the winner of the grand prize? I think um, from the beginning to where we are now, um, we've, we've, we've come a long way and now that we are here, there is no way we are going without the the grand prize. <laughs> there is no way. Yeah, we have uh, to. We, I, we I have guess to. it's true what they say: the violin take it by force. <laughs> and that that's what you are doing. Yeah. Well, uh, we've looked beyond what this competition can give you, which is the one hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and you've told us what Biobalance could be doing in the future. But as you head to the judges to make your last pitch and to give yourselves a chance to win one hundred thousand Ghana cities. I just want to wish you the best of luck from the sidelines mm. and hope that you guys can make something happen on that stage. Mm. Be confident and make sure uh, your last minute efforts counts towards the grand prize. Mm. Good luck to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you Hello, I'm Michael and this is Emmanuel. Uh, we are from Biobalance and we are here to tell you about the white gold we stumbled upon. Here is Emmanuel to tell you more. Poultry farmers are crying because of high cost of feed. They are mixing their feed themselves, missing out essential minerals for their beds. There is blossom and rot for um, plants as well, and there is also eggshells being weaker because of deficiency in calcium. Cattle bone is being discarded along the beaches and is being burned by factories. Biobalance is in position to convert this waste into revenue. What we are doing is basically simple. We are converting this into animal feed and also soil amendments. What it does is to promote bone strength. It also encourages blood clotting and it also improves the overall health of the animal. 
some farmers also say that cattle bone makes the the meat of the animal sweeter which i agree with them yes our business model as i've explained is really simple turning waste into revenue our market is basically poultry farmers which is over 100 million um, in size we are also targeting snow farmers we are targeting feed processes especially poultry feed processes we are targeting pet owners bird pets badges and canaries you name it we are also targeting aviary, um, aviary shops all our products will be made available in all shops all over the, uh, the country but we also seek to set up um, collection centers along the coastal communities so that the, we can create employment for people at the coastal communities as well as um, to collect these um, biomass waste from the coast and into revenue. The customers can also reach us through our various social media handles where um, they can make order they can make orders and then it will be brought to them by delivery or either they pick it at our various centers. At the moment, we have competitive advantage. There are so many uses for cattle bone. It can be used in the paint industry, um, um, peps, um, <laughs> toothpaste. It can also be used for beds. It, it is used even in the pharmaceutical. But at the moment, we are just focusing on um, animal feed and the soil amendment which should pro promote the overall health of the plants and animals. What we seek to do is to empower farmers to, so that they will be able to sustain their profits, become profitable and open up the industry, the poultry industry, so that it will allow the youth to venture because, because of the high feed cost, the youth are not able to engage in the poultry farm. So what we are doing will actually open up the space encourage employment and it will, trickle, it will trickle down like that even the egg that you eat tomorrow may be cheaper what we are seeking to do is also going to make the environment cleaner collecting this from the seashore cleaner beaches look at it what we are also seeking to do is to save energy yes the inorganic um, supplements that farmers use make um, requires a lot of energy in their transformation and the mining. Yes, the dicalcium phosphate, for example, and limestone mm -hmm. requires a lot of energy, and they are not renewable. But this is renewable. So what we are seeking to do is also to reduce energy carbon emissions and promote a circular economy. Okay. To conclude, I'd like to say that we don't want to only increase the profit of. Um, poultry farmers however we like to increase their produ uh, production with our products we have here so we are here to ask for 250,000 Ghana cities to increase our warehouse and promote or uh, supply in it inexpensive calcium carbonate for poultry farmers snow farmers pets even shrimps so um, this, this is what we have for you today We have seen our top three contestants take their last shots at winning the 100,000 Ghana CD Grand Prize. But to further inform our judges and to help their decision making, our judges will now look at how they perform on the market.
We are in our eighth week of competition. It's been fierce, it's been intense, and it's been highly competitive. From over 200 applicants to 17, to 10, to 6, and now to the final three. In 15 seconds, I would receive a text message that indicates who the winner of season two of the circular economic competition is. Our judges came together and made a top decision. When I invite our top three contestants, Agri Macab, Biobalance, and Kodu Technology. Gentlemen, lady, congratulations on your journey so far. You all are winners. You've presented impressive business plans and you've helped the world of secularity a great deal. Our judges and our audience, I believe, are very proud of your efforts. Our judges have come through with the results. And I've also heard that it was a very tough one. And we had to bring in some tiebreakers to have our final results today. We're thankful to all of you, Fernand Sondo, Ichad Vazali, Ama Jampo, Simon Turner, and Jesse Ajipon. Thank you all for your efforts during this entire journey. Our top three is on a stage now, but I would like to make this a two-man race. Balance. This is the end of the world for you. Congratulations. You don't go home empty handed. Our friends I would been have been kind enough to send you some gifts. Banan, please help us do the honors. Thank you, Biobalance. You may leave the stage. It's a two-man race between Agri Makeup and Koji Technology. Our judges have decided who goes home for the 100,000 Ghana cities in seed funding and a title of the number one business plan in the area of secularity on season two of the secular economic competition. The judges have decided and this season's winner is after the break. Stay tuned. We are a few seconds away from announcing the winner of season two of the Secular Economic Competition. Now a two-man race, I would mention who the winner of this season is. And the winner of the Secular Economy season two After all of our applicants and after eight weeks of an intense journey, the proud winner of a 100,000 Ghana cities is congratulations to Kodu Technology. Agri Makeup, you've done a wonderful job. Our judges, our panelists, your trainers, and everyone here is extremely proud of your efforts. 
and everything you have done throughout the last eight weeks. We believe in you and we believe that you will go into the world and make amazing things happen. You have done incredibly well and I wish you all the best. You guys, I believe, will raise more than 100, 100,000. So be focused and we wish you the best of luck. Let's bring you some gifts from our friends at Woody. <laughs> And now your winner of the Secular Economic Competition Season 2, a beautiful tag team of two medical personnel from the North. An interesting story, an interesting product, and great effort throughout our last eight weeks. Please give it up for Koji Technology. Okay. Well done, well done. So, <laughs> Simon? Congratulations to Kodu Technology on emerging the winners of Season 2 of the Secular Economic Competition. But before we wrap up the season, let's delve into what they do. My name is Dr. Idi Mohamed Farid, co-founder of Kodu Technology. Kodu Technology is an agribusiness startup which is based in the northern region where we turn uh, the banana and plantain waste into sanitary parts to solve the issue of period poverty, specifically among rural girl child. Our journey all began through a research, so my team and I embarked on a research in finding out ways we could utilize the wasted resources from banana and plantain looking at how it's being cultivated. So that was when we found out that banana and plantain, they, it had a very high absorption ability. And through that, we were able to meet a young lady who, was, who is Mohamed Rama. She was supposed to be in school, but she was at home, mainly due to a period poverty. So from one of our teammates, we thought of actually, since banana and plantain could absorb at a very high rate, we thought of innovatively turning it into something to actually help Mohamed Rama to get her back to school. That was when we thought of starting the whole idea of Kudu technology, where we now turn that banana and plantain waste into sanitary pad to solve that whole issue. Our journey is started in somewhere around April 2022, and so far, so good. In turning the banana and plantain waste into the sanitary pad, we first of all harvest it from the farms where we peel it off, which technically is called a decorticating process. So after peeling it off, we then grind it into, into the pseudo cotton, after which we now pass it through other stages to get our final cotton for the sanitary pad. One reason why we are using this banana and plantain stem is to be in line with Goal 12 of the Sustainable Development Goal, that is Responsible Production and Consumption, which is in line with the whole idea of circular economy. Ghana accumulates a lot of plastic waste, and most of these plastic waste, majority are 
the cemetery pad waste. Cemetery pad, when you dump them, they are unable to, to decompose. But we making cemetery pads out of banana fiber will decompose in the soil, which is the whole idea of circular economy. Another thing we discovered in Bulegu is that when these banana waste accumulate in high quantity, they dump it inside the water body. And the dam, which is the only major source of water for a community of about 20,000 people, they stand at a high risk of getting so many water-related issues. So coming in and tapping into these wasted resources will save a whole lot of people in Bulehugu community. It has been a very difficult journey because it's a, it's a whole new industry we are bringing on board, a whole new innovation. So when we visited Bulehugu, as a research, it was quite difficult for the people to believe in us because strangers just coming into a community and requesting for banana waste is, was quite a very difficult thing for them to believe in. But upon an intervention from the chief of the area, the, we were given the go ahead to actually use the place for research. Another challenge we face is financing because most of our processes are being done manually which wastes a lot of time and also increase the price, the cost of production. So if we are able to get support and funding to be able to actually purchase machines to make our work easier and possibly reduce the cost so that everybody can afford it, which is the goal of Kodi technology, that is to reduce period poverty among young women. So with an investment of 100,000 cities will be able to purchase a decorticator which will make the work easier and actually reduce the, the workload on the women we've employed. With that, it will help the business to increase its production and hopefully in the next five years, we'll be able to reach, we have a goal of reaching up to 20,000 people by 2029. So hopefully in 2029, we'll be able to achieve our goal with an investment of 100,000 cities. We are very excited to be named winners of season two of Circular Economy. And one thing for sure is that my team and I, we are embarking on this journey. We know there's no turning back. And we'll try our best and do as much as possible to help reduce period poverty among young women. Another message goes out to all startups. You should, you should believe in yourself. Whichever idea you have, keep pushing. One day to work out for you. Thank you. Thank you all for staying with us for this season of the Circular Economic Competition. We are grateful to the European Union in Ghana, the Ministry of Finance, Woodin for making us look so wonderful, Tygon Studios for hosting us, Carbon AV for powering the show, and Timeline Creatives for the production. My name is Bliss King. Thank you all. Have a good year, and we'll see you next year.